I, unlike many creationists, such as Venom Fang X, as for as for you, Satan, um, I censor the comments, so there's nothing you can do. You might as well give up. Tony. And when, when I have videos, I'm, I'm just when I have any videos I make about God, I'm just gonna filter the comments on the boards. I, I'm not allowing them to comment on my motherfucking boards. The Discovery Institute, that's the hub of the intelligent design movement. Creation science evangelism, founded of course by the convicted fraudster and criminally uneducated Kent Hovind, and many others, am a great advocate of free speech. Free speech is worthless unless you are willing to let people say things you do not like. To this end, if someone is making a point, you must let them do it, no matter how demonstrably wrong what they are saying is. And all through the fossil record and life, we don't find one of these. A crocoduck. There's just nothing like it. There is no one All right, so you transitioning can, into another. You can poke holes it's in the simple. evolutionary process, and, and you can poke holes, as I did, in, in the uh, Big Bang Theory, or whatever crazy thing they're trotting out here. Now, to say I've never deleted comments or blocked people would be false. Trollers, spammers, and people who send me hate mail will, on occasion, get blocked. And to be quite honest, if your idea of a virtuous use of free speech is pointless speculation on someone's lineage or how ugly their mama was... Well, your mama is so... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't bring anyone mother into this. Well, you can do it elsewhere. Similarly, if your idea of free speech is simply repeatedly copying and pasting from other websites, then you are performing a task more befitting of a computer. Indeed, YouTube clearly has algorithms in place that automatically mark such comments as spam. I have little ethical issues in deleting these if I come across them. So it was with a sense of mirth the other day that I found that some of my earlier Why Do People Laugh at Creationists videos, particularly the ones containing the convicted fraudster Kent Hovind, had been targeted by flagging campaigns by creationists. Both down thumbing and marking as spam any non creationist comment and up thumbing creationist comments. Yep, all those creationist comments, they really show what a draconian censor I am, don't they? Again, it is seen that creationists have a propensity towards intellectual vandalism. They have a level playing field to say whatever they want and make whatever argument they feel most accurately articulates the strength of their position. And they have done it. The best argument they can put forward is flagging comments they don't like as spam, abusing the system. This is their strongest card. However, whoever did this was clearly very dedicated. They appear to have flagged about 1,000 comments split over three videos containing the convicted fraudster and the young earth creationist Kent Hovind. Just to flag these comments, they had to read 1,000 or so comments, decide if they were pro-creationism or sane, then rate each one six plus times each. It's an absolute minimum of about three hours of mindless clicky work. Plus, I think YouTube has some timeout feature to prevent people abusing the system like this, so on average you only get about one comment vote per minute, meaning that someone put in 24 hours work just sitting down and flagging these videos. Then, of course, these videos get sufficient traffic that the superficial effects of their flagging campaign are lost in about a week. Secondly, they cannot down-thumb my comments, meaning that anyone who does actually look at these comments, all they will see is creationists getting their asses handed to them, like this. These docs keep on mentioning fact. What fact? Science is not, nor will ever be, fact. Who can even start to believe the Earth is 65 million years old? What will it be next week? 59.6 million? Which one of us was there when it formed? You don't understand the concept of convergent measurement. Indeed, the dates you give, I have no problem with. 60 or 65 million years. Shit, both are pretty accurate. Both results are within 5% of each other. Close? Mathematics and science can't operate on the idea of being close and happy with it. If that were the case, NASA would have never flown man to the moon. They would have rounded pi off at three, call it good, and messed up the calculations and kill off man after man. So what you're saying is the Apollo missions had no mathematical errors. Are you kidding? These spacecraft were navigated optically. Nope, there's no way they could have done the calculations accurately enough so they'd navigate the craft optically. This is how they navigate planetary probes as well. They do it mostly by maths, but they correct the error manually. Roll, pitch, etc. could never have been as good as 10%.
Finally, I can simply turn off the comment voting on these vandalized videos and instantly undo all of their work, albeit at the cost of disabling the comment voting on that video. Again, this really shouldn't be necessary in a community where people act in a grown-up, civic and socially responsible manner. Evidently, this is simply too much to ask of creationists. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what creationists do. These videos remain as a universally available and increasingly popular source of immunization against the poisonous little creationist cult of anti-intellectualism, anti-knowledge, anti-science and anti-free speech. You see, what the creationists haven't realized is that censorship, ultimately, is internally destructive. Free speech is not just a virtue. It was necessary in the development of our civilization. All progress relies on freedom of information and networks of information. This has been the core of the scientific method on which our civilization is founded. What sort of world would we live in today if Einstein, Newton and Galileo had all kept their ideas to themselves? process necessitates the examination of the veracity of the status quo, a process that the scientific community in the open marketplace of ideas is ruthlessly good at. You simply cannot attain this sort of progress in an environment of censorship, can you Galileo? Does evolution get this scrutiny? Yes, of course it does. When Darwin proposed the mechanism he had no idea of the details of reproduction with variation. Now we do. Darwin had little understanding of other significant factors in evolution, such as genetic drift and punctuated equilibrium. Now we do. However, pervasively it is seen that nothing in biology makes sense without evolutionary theory, just like nothing in chemistry makes sense without atomic theory. So why does no one take intelligent design, the rebranding of creationism, seriously? Well, it's simple. In a free marketplace of ideas, the right to express an opinion does not extend to the right to be taken seriously. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. You'll find the maker of the banana, almighty God, has made it with a non-slip surface. The maker of the banana, almighty God... The maker of the banana, almighty God... If you want to propose something at variance with virtually everything that is known of the real world, such as flat earthism or creationism, you need proof. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Creationists not only do not have such evidence to back up their claims, what they propose contradicts a large portion of what has been established by the scientific method. Further, what can be claimed without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. A point that is self-evident is if you can claim something without evidence, you can make the counterclaim without evidence with equal validity. With every other video I've made, they stand on their merits and get rated as such. However, for this video and this video alone, I ask people who oppose the willful and unnecessary abuse of the system by creationists to rate and favorite this video as a token of your opinion on the subject. We all know that evolution has never been proven. It was a, it was a theory, an idea that was made about some fucking moron that wrote a book about it, and then it was never proved. It's not enough something that you approved it and prove it. They they didn't observe a monkey evolving into a human being. So if 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 humans evolve from monkeys, there will be no monkeys left on the face of the planet. Now, if my limited knowledge, or my limited intelligence, or limited to the to the to the fucking knowledge of 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 science, why are there still monkeys on the face of the planet? Why why are there still monkeys on the face of the fucking planet? Well, firstly, we share a common ancestor with the great apes. This is not the same thing as saying we evolved from monkeys. However, your confusion over common ancestry can probably be best cleared up by a simple analogy. The reason there are still great apes while Homo sapiens share a common ancestor with them is the same reason that Americans are mostly descended from Europeans, yet there are still Europeans.